productivity. And you find out the first thing that comes first is the individual before we talk about team productivity. Have you said, let's see if there's another way. 
sin was driven, driven to do. And a drive, you know, it's not a shouting that drive comes. Drive is in it. Look at it. It says personal initiative can mean the difference between business failure and success. It's a child of necessity where in times and seasons where initiative was come to play. There is nothing so powerful as an idea whose time has come. Android was around before Google came up and just tied it way up. Steve Jobs tied it everything up. Steve Jobs. That guy tied it. He wasn't the, the, the first job he got was not his product that he did. It was that other guy was a boss guy with his beard. He was the one that came up with the idea. But what he did was that he went on to improve it. And that's why we have iPad, we have Android, and all of that. Yeah, okay, see, Jones may be high up there, and I may be using that one. But it doesn't have to be high up there. What, what is it that is driving me? What is it? What is optimism? Your definition. How would you define optimism? They said, you know a man by the first seven words that proceed from the mouth. I picture you like this. The first seven words, between seven and twenty-one words that proceed out of the mouth, is a sum total of two words. A person that is positive will not come out with first seven words that are negative. That's what we're going to be doing. Wow, go there, boss. Now, wow, this company will not kill you. You don't hold this like this. Hey, hey, hey. Ah, have you? Well done. Ah. You don't know what you say. That's what I know about life. You don't know. You may feel that way, but what, what are you saying? Are you on the passengers? your company. That's what optimism is all about. And when you are talking about your company, you are talking about your company with passion. The catchphrase for Apple is what is Apple. It's about creativity. There's something quickly Google in class. Apple, their catchphrase or their brand can't be in that company and then you will not be doing something. It's more or less like you think differently. So basic. Yes. Oh, you said that's very big. No, it's think differently, actually. Oh, I didn't hear you. It just came back to me. Think differently. There's no employee that will not be thinking differently. Because that's what we bombard them with. Think differently. And that's why the job now has gone how many years now? There's still a lot of problems that are going to stick up on the back of Think differently. Think differently. And now what case it is, you've got it, I mean, let's see, we came back to it. Think differently. And when I started, I said, wow, wow. Because as you're going through that gate, the, the, the mindset is that you think differently. And that's what optimism is. So no matter what we start, we will we'll see an end, end, end result. Empathy. Not sympathy, but empathize with the company. Service orientation. Do you have a service orientation? Are you willing to serve? Most companies, whether it's their title or not, that's a company because all of your value says customer centric. So everything you do must be customer centric. People with this competence are attentive to what emotional cues and listen well. Do you listen well? I have a video on listening. Most times people don't listen because you see what happens is that people are, are carried away with the things that don't matter in what is being said. Do you listen well? Do you show sensitivity? And more understand other people's perspective. Who's raised seven 
having some highly effective people. Not so bad people. Who has the book? Let me see your hand. Uh, try it because I can see some of you being laughing here. Philip Harvey says, understand and then be understood. That's how we fight. So you have to seek to understand before you are being understood. Simple. When you seek to understand first, it's a higher level of communication where it works wonders. Help out based on understanding other people's needs and feelings. You see, one thing people say is that, oh, I didn't mean to hurt the person. Or, ah, what I said, what did I say? What is the reaction? What you have to understand is that how does the recipient feel about what has been said? And the little test is that you try to understand this. If somebody did that to me, how would I feel? Developing others. I've talked about that. I'm going to give you an exercise because you're going tired of me already. It's only five to four. But I will come back to that. I'll talk about the diversity of folks. Are there two people in this room that are our classmates in school? Are there two people that went to the same school around the same period? Yeah? You went to school around the same period. Is there anybody in this room that went to the same primary school? Not different. I mean, there's probably 25 people in this room, and none of you went to the same primary school. So, what we're trying to say is that we're all different, we have diverse backgrounds. We're all different, diverse, different exposures. The way school really was when I was in school is totally different from probably the way it was some of you. And it'd be different, yes, because I had a view as well. I knew what the difference was with what he said. I went to school with uh, your empty. We went to, we finished up with the same primary school. I we came back from So, different mindsets, different educational background, different exposure. And that's how you have to deal with people. Don't I, I can't expect. Therefore, I was saying that uh, you didn't know your family didn't work on it. Not as, uh, I'm not saying that, but we, when we were growing up, we used to pull water in batteries. Now we don't pour water in batteries. No, I'm just trying to say, so I can't say, ah, you didn't know that they poured water in ah, 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 ah. One generation and two. I can't say that because it's, it's different. It's totally uh, the way of communication. In our time, you do a lot of memos and all that. Now, memos are passed, letters, posted, letters that you receive in the post are, are, are gone, gone for good. So when people write on the CV, I have good communication skills. I said, who is getting communication skills this day? The moment you write the wrong text, then Microsoft is already telling you it's not correct. <laughs> so we don't like to see good communication skills because there's things in place that have cleaned up all those all those things. Those are not the competencies we're looking for as an HR person. But that, that's it, the diversity, the perception, the background, the experience. We must be aware of that. It's called we have to be aware of that. Consciously. The way a certain generation was dressed will be slightly different from another generation where they put on. So we have to be conscious of that because that's where disrespect comes in. I'm going to give you an exercise because Using you slowly as we have right. Can you? You are going to go back into your teams. Can you take? Thank <laughs> you. 
something that holds you down. I fear entangles. It doesn't reverse. So sometimes you have to identify that fear. You know? The fear of going, you know people say, I'm afraid of the unknown. But you cannot know the unknown unless you try it. And that, that, that's just the, the way, I, I see a lot of my colleagues who say, oh, I can't work for myself. I, I just can't comprehend it. But the truth is, growth comes when you take risks. And that's emotional intelligence. They fear like this. Some people cannot even sleep in the dark because of experiences. But at the end of the day, the day you try to sleep in the dark, you realize there's nothing. Absolutely. Some people have a fear of flying. I know somebody who goes, well, I read about somebody who normally goes, is a top musician, but he travels by, by road so as not to fly. And so fear takes, is an emotion that is most crippling. So whatever it is that you are afraid of, you need to take it, you need to tackle it head on. You must tackle it. Because when you think about it, it will inflict you. You know, some people say, I have the fear of speaking. I don't know how to speak. I just don't like speaking. So when they get to a place, they stay in that place. It shouldn't be. There must be, if there's a fear that you recognize, it's an emotion that is negative, that you need to turn around to positive. But you know what that emotion is. You know what that fear is. Right. Okay. Um, Next emotion, um, group three. Yeah, group one. Ah, group one. Ah, sorry. Ah, <laughs> going to kick out like that. Group one. Courage. What's the next emotion? Courage. What about running away? Oh, that's good. Eh? No, it, not, it may not be. It may not necessarily be fear. It may be um, indecision. It's something that you don't want to. Do. Think about so we just run away from that problem. Yeah. So it is a decision making, running away. By the way, it's an emotion because that means you are not tackling the issue head on. Yeah. You run away from it. And so there are some things that we run away from. Maybe our financial status. When we are financially. Some of us, we are running away from going back to school to improve ourselves. What is it you are running away from? Think about it. Think about it. Sorry, something transpired between you two. I'm talking rubbish. No, no, no. She said something. What did you say? It was about the school. Oh, going back to school. Going back to school, okay. They, 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 we run away. There's a lot of things we run away from. But you have to think about those things you're going to do. When you go home, look at this thing again and use it as a self-assessment. What am I running away from? Because when you run away from it, there's a bit of fear of it. And it's, it, 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 at the same time, it, 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 it's not tackling something head on, you know, when you run away. There's some issues you need to deal with. Because those issues can come back again and stop the growth. Okay? And he says, inflicting himself in the wounds. What is that? Where you gonna hide yourself?
Sometimes it's even our parents. And we need to try something. Like, you know what? This issue has been living. Yeah, let's sit down. No problems. Let's, let's take it objectively. Not that someone will be raising their voice. No. But when you put a point across, and that's my plan, I don't send text without even planning what I want to write before I write it. Text. Text. And because I teach emotional intelligence, I know last week somebody saw me and they said, Oh, I've just seen you joking. They said, You are so. I said, This is me. I don't know the person. I said, I'm sorry. But I should, I should know what it is. But unfortunately, I don't. Because this, my phone, has not shown up your identity. Not this, you are not on the phone. But I put it, it has not shown up your identity. So I am conversing in the dark. Instead of saying, ah, who are you? <laughs> Do you see the difference? And it's emotional, honestly, it's emotional intelligence that makes me, like, how would I, if it's something that is very close to me? Because you know these phones have, they, they do some things that you don't understand. You look for somebody's number and you don't find it. So if it's somebody who's very close, and I say, who are you? You know, immediately, you feel that, I, how come this person does not have my number? So I said, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just talking in the dark. For some reason, your identity has not come up. Really, you please say, so, oh, sorry. And I know it's because of the way I wrote the, the text. That's the one that comes to mind. So even before you send the text, because you know text carries emotions. When you're angry, you can tell the text that was written in anger. You can tell an email that was written in anger. So those are some of the tools that you use to contain some of the things you do. So that you, you, you are high on emotional intelligence. Right, let's move on. Himself in the mood, we said that one. Which other emotion? This is good, you are not said anything. So, not going to say next time, next time, good on you. Next time, Yes. There's nothing wrong. That's what we can 
either say it's negative or positive. But you must be aware of your environment. Determination is, 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 is came here. Yes, came here. So it's not as an observation, was aware. We're talking about self-awareness. You must be aware. One of the richest men in England and 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 great Michael what's his first name? Michael Green. He owns the ages. One thing he said, he said I have three days. I'm alert. He never went to school. Jewish is one of the top billionaires. If you go to Forbes list, he's, I think he's number 10 or 11 now. He never went to university or anything. He said, but he always says, says to people, how he is. I'm aware, I'm alert, and I'm asserting. And I will never forget that. He said, any little little thing, I'm aware of it. And he takes his position because he's aware. Awareness. We must be aware of where we are. We must be aware of who we are, and we should fit it together so that progress has come. Right. Let's back to this group. Which one? Which one is the next emotion that you saw? What do you have there? Yes. What you have is to do what you do right now. Charming. Charming. 
Chandi. Yes. Yes, Gary Chandi. Oh, yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> So at the end of the day, you have to understand that some of these 